You know, I had a really bad BMX crash when I was like 12 years old. And I sort of screwed my back up. You know, and then surfing over the years and bodyboarding, you do damage over the years. And I think eventually my back got pretty screwed. I took time off and I fixed it. And then I surfed for about seven years. And then I just blew it out again. And then I was like, God, what am I gonna do? Like, I can't go in the ocean. And I was going every day. And I thought, God, I could body surf maybe. But then I, I saw somebody on a mat on some footage or somewhere I saw a surf mat. And I thought, wow, that looks like fun, you know? Maybe I could do that. I don't have to do the pop up. So I, I bought one and found it super hard at first. I was just like, oh my God. It was almost comedy disaster, you know? It felt like a blow up pool toy. And eventually it was like, every session I would get like just these few really amazing waves and all of a sudden it was just like bang it was like every wave I just got on trim and I realized wow this is actually pretty good I think a lot of people start thinking, oh, they could all just get on a mat and just instantly trim, you know, like they're flying down a wall at Lennox or whatever. You're just trimming along and there's no real skill set to it, but the learning curve to get to that level, I think just at the start is honestly, is just persistence. Like it's not like a bodyboard, obviously. You're not gonna force it like a bodyboard or a surfboard. You, once you get it dialed, wherever the hydrodynamic point is, yeah, you can control the hell out of it and trim up and down. And, you know, you just look like you're doing nothing, but you're doing everything. But once you learn, obviously, the dance of the mat, I suppose, if there's any, if there's any way of describing it that way, once you actually learn it all and figure out, you can, um, yeah, you're just flying. Fins. Oh man. I think it's just personal taste. It's like shoes, you know, everyone always talks about them. And obviously everybody's foot's so different. I've got a collection of fins, but I sort of, I think I'm pretty varied in, in my attack of how I use them. I was using like these stealths, these bodyboarding fins, and they gave you actually a really good kick. Like it was actually a natural kick flutter. But like for me, on a mat, I use the Voigt duck feet. With the extra bit of length, it just helped a lot. You've got all the different drainage holes. The Mike Stewart Vipers have the best drainage by far. If you're on a mat, I just think they're way too short. I've obviously got the normal Vipers, yellow dot, orange dot, but I tend to use really just the ducks. And then obviously the fins all around, they're probably the best, just super comfy. And they float. Like so many, I've seen them just wash in. It's like, man, genius. I've got enough fins, obviously, to last me two lifetimes, but I don't know. You can never have enough, really. <laughs> If you go to a break where there's a lot of white surfboards, nobody's intimidated by a guy on a surf mat. Everybody's just like almost laughing at you until they see you get waves. And then they're like, oh my God, how fast does that thing go? And I'm like, yeah, I know, they just fly. You know, like, like literally just smiling going, oh my God, he's just like on full trim, not even pumping it and just like skimming past me. They're just like, blown away by the trim speed you actually can get out of them. And you think, God, it's just a bag of air. It, it sort of throws up everything we've been told about with surfboards. And obviously, you know, just having this bag of air that when your body conforms it in some bizarre way, 
and takes the energy of the wave from the inside and just, you know, that feeling, you can still feel the water coming through the mat. And it's just, yeah, there's nothing you can compare that feeling. Yeah, it's just epic.